In this video, I show you the Pro Acryl Paints for miniature painting. But before we get into today's video, just want to share with you what the GGGG is for this month. Each month, Bob the Beholder picks some of my Patreon supporters to receive gratitude gifts. And for this month of May of 2022, we have the printed and painted bridge from DecoQuest Grimness Fortress set. We have the Bard Sung Legend Pledge in hand and ready to ship. Wonderland's War Deluxe Edition with premium chips also in hand and ready to ship. $100 to go towards the Grexdale Kickstarter for the Village STL files. And Monument Hobbies was gracious enough to offer a starter set for one of my Patreon supporters. Go ahead and use the link below to go to my Patreon page if you want to get in on that. Bob is going to be making his picks this coming Sunday, May 29th. So Monument Hobbies, who does manufacture Pro Acryl paints, did not send me this. I actually purchased this at Adepticon, and this is more than just the base set. I pretty much bought all of their paints, except for their transparents as well as their metallics. But otherwise, up to this point, I have all of their available colors. If you haven't seen my Adepticon video, go ahead and check that out here but I really like these a lot. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you why I'm basically making this my go-to paint. Now, like most miniature painters, I have a bunch of different paints, but before this, my go-to paint was actually Reaper miniature paints. Now I'm gonna share a little bit sort of my painting journey and how I went from using craft paints to using Pro Acryl. But if you wanna skip forward to the actual review of this set and why I ended up deciding on this, Go ahead and use the timestamps below to skip ahead. But I started painting miniatures back in the 80s when Ral Partha made the metal miniatures for Dungeons and Dragons. And back then, I just used a tester's enamel on these metal miniatures. And since then, obviously, I have shifted over to using acrylic paints since that became a thing. What was available at that time was just craft paints and these really cheap dollar bottles of craft paint that you can find in your Hobby Lobbies or your Michaels or any general craft store, even at Walmart. That's really what I used for the first 10 or so years of my adult life when I got back into miniature painting. And that's my suggestion actually to those of you who are just getting into trying out miniature painting. Don't spend a lot of money and just buy really even the sample sets like the color by number sets that you can get at Hobby Lobby and just try it out just to see if it's something that you want to do because I've seen a lot of people uh, drop a couple hundred dollars to buy paint sets and then end up not even using it because they end up not liking miniature painting. And actually, if you check out these photos of some of my initial miniatures, these are Reaper metal miniatures before they transitioned to plastic. You can see that my, I could achieve the same amount of detail and painting and shading that you can with miniature specific paints. So right off the bat, I just wanna say that you can achieve amazing results with whatever cheap paints that you wanna get. But what you get by spending that extra money to get miniature specific paints is that you have a higher pigment density and so you don't have to do as many layers to achieve rich, vibrant colors. But the truth is I still use a lot of craft paint. If you see any of my painting tutorials for terrain, I exclusively use craft paint on terrain and even for my miniatures, I still will um, pick up a bottle just because I don't have that color available in the miniature line. So I'm a firm believer that whatever works for you um, can work and it's less about the paint, more about the painter. And you can achieve some amazing results even with cheap craft paint. Now having said that, when I did transition over, uh, because I was a big Reaper fan in terms of their miniatures, I did go ahead and buy Reaper and currently Reaper does have the MSP or MSD, I don't quite remember, but their quality has gone up since I bought these original ones. And the thing that I really like about these is that they come in dropper bottles. Now Vallejo also has dropper bottles and I prefer my paints to come in dropper bottles so that I can just put out a, the little bit that I need. And really these bottles last for a super long time. Now, obviously Games Workshop with Citadel paints, a ton of people paint with these. I don't like the flip top because eventually you can only use about uh, three quarters of the bottle because it eventually just dries out just from flipping it open. I know you're supposed to transfer it over to a wet palette, but I just, whenever I use 
these paint pots, I just keep it open. Now, for my washes, I like having these um, pots. So the GW washes, as well as the contrast colors, I prefer pots over dropper bottles. But in terms of all of the other paints, I prefer to have these dropper bottle types. And Army Painter also has a dropper bottle style as well. So I really used primarily the Reaper for the following 10 years of painting miniatures. And honestly, they still work fine and I'm still gonna keep my uh, base set of Reaper. But the reason why I ended up transitioning over to Pro Acryl is basically two reasons. One is that these paints are actually more watered down than most of the other paints that you're gonna find, including even craft paints. Whenever I'm using Reaper, I do have to water down my brush quite a bit or for those of you who use a wet palette, um, that added water on the plate will actually help water it down. And a lot of Citadel paints also need to be watered down because it's pretty thick. But Pro Acryl straight out of the bottle can be used without watering down. And you actually don't wanna use a wet palette for Pro Acryl paints just because they are thinner than most of your other paints. In fact, when I wanna do dry brushing, I actually squirt some onto my plate and wait for it to dry out a little bit before I dry brush just because it's that wet. Now, some of you might not like how watered down Pro Acryl is, but I did do tests and even though it's a lot easier to paint because it is thinner and you don't have to um, mix in water as much, there are some downsides to it. For example, if you are priming most of your miniatures black, it does take more coverage in order to go over the black. So I did do an experiment where I tried out various colors of undercoating. I do spray prime most of my miniatures and uh, I tried out both white, gray, and black. Those are the most common ones to use. And definitely I would suggest using white just because this is a thinner paint. Now, I was su successful in painting over a black undercoating, but it did require quite a number of coats, especially this yellow, in order for me to have a good layer of paint on there. But if I do black undercoating, I probably would stick to using my Reaper colors rather than using the Pro Acryl. But the reason why I ended up choosing this has less to do with paint quality and more to do with the fact that this has a different style of dropper bottle. One of the things that I discovered pretty soon with my Reaper dropper bottles is that more often than not, the tips do get clogged. So I just have to, whenever I open them up, use a paper clip or a pin in order to um, reopen up the opening at the tip of the dropper bottle. And that's sort of a pain to do. The other thing as well that I don't like is I'm actually pushing down the dried paint back into the bottle. And so that eventually will clump up and will clog the nozzle again. So that's been a pretty big pain. Sometimes it is so clogged that I have to pull off the tip. There's a way that you pull the tip off of these dropper bottles in order to access the paint that's down in there. So that's one of the faults that I found with these Reaper paints. I do think that the more recent formula that they have tends to clog a little bit less, but it still happens. So I always have to paper clip it. And the way that Monument Hobbies have designed their dropper bottles, it's the kind that you find on Elmer's glue where there's a rod and it just twists up and down up against that rod. So that prevents any clogging from happening with these tips. I also like the fact that there is a ball in here and these paints are so thin that you can just shake them by hand. Now I do have a vibrating paint shaker that I use quite a bit, but the, these paints are thin enough that just shaking by hand actually works pretty well. And these bottles are huge. It has a ton of paint in them. They're 22 mil as opposed to your standard Citadel, which is 12 mil. So it's about twice as much paint. And I imagine that these will last me forever because even my Reaper paints, most of them have lasted me more than a decade. There's very few colors that I've had to replace over the course of that time. And I am pretty happy with the high pigmentation that is found in these paints. And for me to be able to put it down relatively quickly, you can see just from the sample models that I've painted up, I have two from Wolfenstein. And if you haven't seen my unboxing video for that, check that out here. And I painted up a bunch more heroes from Zombicide Black Plague. Most of what I do these days is speed painting because I just have hundreds of miniatures. So I don't put 
even as much detail as I used to, even when I use craft paint. But I am definitely really happy with these paints. That's why I invested and spent, you know, uh, $200 in getting the entire set. And I'm really happy that I made that decision. If you're wondering about this stand, it's a modified stand from Thingiverse. I will provide a link below if you want to print these out. I would normally just upload it back onto Thingiverse, but I can't access my account anymore for whatever strange reason. So this is just a direct link if you want it. Those of you who have used Pro Acryl, make comments below whether or not you like it and what you compared it to. Otherwise, use my link below to go to my Patreon page in order to sign up so that you have a chance to be chosen by Bob to receive a starter set of these paints. Happy painting, happy gaming. We'll see you next time.